And as we'll talk later this afternoon. Yes, there can indeed exist evidence, which, but, but let's talk about it this afternoon. But uh, if I forget to mention it, please bring up the question again. All right? After I talk about how this is a dream and how we build models of reality and so on. Okay? But what I was saying um, is that there are certain difficulties we have in keeping straight what a dream is. For example, in one of my early lucid dreams, I was flying around the dream world. And it seemed then that I was flying over the San Francisco Bay Area near where I lived. And then I thought, oh, well, that means I must be sleeping down over that hill somewhere. So I'll fly down and visit my sleeping body. Now, when I woke up, I thought about that. Why? Uh, I was confused about something. The world I was dreaming of was not the world my body is asleep in. Why did I think it was? Just because it looked like it. Uh, and that isn't reason enough. Uh, we have a strong tendency to think of people that we know, scenes we know, the closer we are really to our ordinary life, oh, this is my ordinary life. We have strong biases in favor of thinking of the people we see as real people. I mean, until this moment, it has not even occurred to me that Every one of the people in this room, that some of them might not really be here. <laughs> I just assume that all of you are here and you, and you see a picture, you have a consciousness, there's somebody there. So if we're in a world in which that may not be true, then we can easily not realize that and instead assume what is usually the case while we're awake is still the case in our dream. And the, the fact is that in general... When, when we have dreams about the people we know and we tell them about that, they have no idea what we're talking about. Now, now Lynn, for example, uh, does this often enough. She describes a dream where her dream version of me was doing something that I don't think I would do or saying something I don't think I would say and so on. And I'm, I hope I'm not responsible for what she dreams about. But... Uh, I, I don't want to say that it is impossible that you ever in your dream meet someone who is actually in a sense there because it's happening right now. So we know that there is at least one world in which that can happen. And this afternoon when we talk more about this, I think it will make more sense of why I would prefer that we have the assumption that until I receive evidence to the contrary, it's better to assume that what I'm experiencing in the dream is entirely my mind, my responsibility alone. <coughs> and it would be possible to have evidence to the contrary, but it's a very special kind of evidence and you need to have very good evidence to assume anything else. I, I suggest as an exercise in lucid dreams to start taking apart dream televisions, for example, and see whether or not you find circuitry in there. I am very confident if I were to open this device, I would find a picture tube in it and some vacuum tubes or transistors and all kinds of circuits. But a dream image of a television has no reason to have anything whatsoever inside. And that's what I said. If you experiment with the dream objects you find, including your dream body, say, here is a hand. I can pass this hand through that one. What happened to the dream bones and the dream flesh? Uh, I say it is better to think of it as an idea, a mental model of what your body is. Again, this sort of metaphysical discussion we're having now will be much clearer after this afternoon when we talk about models of reality. Okay. Yes. Again, yeah, that is an example of information transfer, of knowledge. Let me give a simple example of this. Since people are obviously interested in this issue, it's a little premature, but compare the difference between two kinds of shared experience. Right now, we're all in this room together. Yes? Now, I would like you each to imagine that we are at the beach swimming in the cool water together, okay? So everybody now imagine that, please, for a moment. Okay, 
Now, I say, ah, I just had a dream in which we were all at the beach together. Did anyone have an experience like that? You all said, yes, me. Does that mean we were actually there together? Or does it mean that we shared the same idea of being there together? Is that really the same as the sense in which we are sharing this world now that we're interacting with? Not quite. See, so, see, we have in the cases where you see someone or meet someone, uh, two alternative explanations. That there is knowledge being shared or a world being shared. Yes. So, question. Uh, uh, that's a, a, a re- fairly large question. It's, it's, we'll be dealing with it right after the lunch break, uh, which we'll be taking. I guess it's actually just about to, what at one. So that's in two minutes. Uh, but briefly, uh, to give you a foretaste of, of what's later on, I think all of the different theories of dreams and ways of working dreams have a certain validity. They obviously work and help people to understand themselves better. But I would distinguish between a way of working with a client or a way of, of gaining, uh, of progressing on some path with a theory of how things work. I, I don't think that the theories of Freud and Jung and the rest of them have much value. The practice does have value. And that's to be expected because after all, these people are all clinicians. They are practitioners who found something that worked and then thought up an explanation of why it worked, but that doesn't have to be right. And and, uh, speaking of Freud and Jung, for example, I think they each have a part of the story correct, but they don't, either of them have a global understanding of what a dream is and what are the factors that determine this. We have something to benefit from that they did not. We have their teachings and the new knowledge that has come out in the century since then. So, so in certain areas at least um, that involve science, it is quite typical that you know, an ordinary person today could know more about how the world works than the greatest scientist of two centuries ago. Uh, so do we have any questions about the techniques that we have talked about? Okay. Uh, yeah. That may have to do with your biological rhythms and the fever itself. Because our experience in general is that lucid dreaming is much more likely late in the night, you, depending on when you go to bed, uh, after dawn. The old traditions describe that the, lucid, the dreams after dawn are likely to come true or are going to be clear. The ones before are likely to be confused. A fever is something that biology is prepared to, that usually helps us fight an infection. But if it's too high, it can kill us. 